Hey guys, I wanted to make a quick installation video on this uh, Silvel diesel heater that I bought uh, for my two-car insulated garage. I know there's ups and downs as far as putting these things in a garage um, regarding the amount of heat that you get out of them. They're more of a portable um, parking type heater, but uh, I wanted to give it a shot. My garage is fairly well insulated and I don't need to heat it every day. It's just kind of a um, as-needed basis. But uh, I wasn't crazy about putting in an exhaust hole in the side of my garage, but uh, I gave it a shot anyway, and I think the way I did it was fairly effective. I'm not saying it's the way to do it or, you know, the right way to do it or whatnot, but uh, I did take every step that I could think of to prevent getting too much heat in my wall. You know, what I'm doing here is you see me putting a, the interior half of a, a flue thimble in, and what I did is I... I ordered this uh, through the hole kind of exhaust adapter or port for a boat um, and adapted it to fit in the thimble and I used some of the ceramic fiber insulation to kind of fill in that gap between that adapter and the inside of the thimble. I just didn't want any take any chances of having any heat build up inside that wall you know in contact with anything that was combustible so I just you know drill a few locating holes to the outside part of the the siding here so when I go out and trace the uh, the thimble on the outside I'm kind of lined up with the inside and here you can kind of see how the whole assembly goes together what I'm doing is just you know making some lines across so I can I can drill four holes for some screws um, that way the outside was held in place by more than just you know the sealant and I did seal all the stuff up so water can't get in I just didn't I didn't get the camera going for that part but um, there you can kind of see the outside view of it. I'm going to drill the holes to the right size. I drilled them too small the first time. But uh, I just kind of repurposed some pan head screws that I had laying around. And, and I was really careful when I tightened up so I didn't uh, smash that flange flat. But all I did is I took the outside half of that thimble and I put a 5 inch cap inside of that. And then I'd hole saw a hole big enough for that exhaust port to go inside of that cap so it kind of adapted it into a nice clean look I think. Uh, still kind of big for the size of the exhaust pipe but again I wanted that space between the hottest part of that exhaust pipe and and the walls of that thimble so Here you see me kind of just lining that up and, and tracing it and I, I jigsaw this out and it ended up being lined up with the inside part so when I went to slide it all together it, it made it up nicely but um, I'll put links in the description for for all these parts you know all the way from the, the thimble to the cap to the port the uh, ceramic fiber insulation that stuff says it's rated up to 2600 degrees Fahrenheit you know direct contact so um, I didn't hold a flame up to it or anything, but this exhaust isn't anywhere near that temperature, so I thought this was a pretty safe way to do it. Um, and it, it worked out well. Right here, what you see me doing is just kind of placing some uh, landscaping stepping stones over the top of my shelving. I didn't, you know, being that the exhaust comes out of the bottom of these units and there's not a ton of clearance there, 
I didn't want to take any chances of having any combustible materials, you know, close to where this hot hot part of the exhaust is. So I just kind of spaced them out where they would they would protect that uh, that wood surface. And it doesn't show in the video, but I I just connected the pipe here and, and ran this thing to test it. But I come back later, and I think you'll see in a picture. I put the the hose clamp on there and got it nice and tight inside the wall, so there shouldn't be any chance of anything leaking. And in this part of the video, I just used a, a jumper pack that I had on hand to to run this thing through a startup and a you know a full blast cycle and then a cool down. But I come back here in a little bit and I use a a 30 amp power supply to, to be my permanent power supply and I think you can do it you know with a, a 10 amp but I, I just went with a 30 here you can see the fan indicator telling you that you got power and it's starting the the fire up cycle here um, and then the next light that you'll see come on here is the glow plug and that's when it really starts to pull the most power and I metered it here in a minute and you know it's it's just over seven amps. There's the indicator for the uh, fuel pump, and you'll hear the ticking too. You don't really need the indicator on the control board, but uh, it shows up anyway. And then I just kind of let it go up through its warm-up cycle and, and go to the full full setting, the full heat. And it takes about five minutes before this thing really kicks out any substantial heat. It warms up fairly slow, but once once it gets going, you know, it, it puts out a pretty significant amount of heat. On the bottom of the, uh, the indicator there on the screen, you'll kind of see two really light blue lines that indicate the, the heat inside the exchanger. And now you get your first yellow one showing up there. There's two yellows and then there'll be two reds. Once you get those two reds, that's as, as hot as it's gonna get. Um, and I still think it the air gets a little bit hotter even after that second red one comes on. It's just everything is kind of coming up to temperature on that heat exchanger and uh, it blows out a pretty significant amount of heat. Not only is the air hot, but it moves quite a bit of air too. There's your second yellow. Here I stuck my meter on there and uh, started it from a cold start and you can see how the amps they start out pretty low uh, but right now the fans running and the glow plugs on and as the glow plug stays on for a few seconds uh, we get up to about 7.3 amps was the max that I saw um, once you hit 7.3 it never seemed to go any higher and then once the glow plug turns off it drops down to barely barely detectable uh, here in a second I'll I'll speed it up for you so you can sign, kind of see how you know it bounces around while the thing's going through its warm-up cycle. Um, about five amps, I think, is what it what it was bouncing around to. So here we're sped up about ten times, and as it's warming warming up and starting to increase the fan speed, it hovers right around five. And then about here is where the glow plug turns off, and we just drop down, and it hovers between a tenth and a a fifth of an amp so it's basically nothing I've got a, a very oversized power supply there that's that 30 amp power supply that'll be the permanent power supply but um, you could probably run it with a 10 and here's just a quick shot of the exhaust on the outside while it's running it's it's a little noisy but this is over my trash cans I don't plan on really hanging out in this area so it shouldn't be a big deal Kind of the setup with the exhaust going over the, the paver there, the intake air, the hose clamp that I got installed, and how that ceramic fiber insulation looks. And there's my overall clearance at the bottom. I know I'm using 2x4s on the sides, but 
I do think that's far enough away from that exhaust. I shouldn't have anything to worry about. Well, I appreciate you guys watching. Hopefully this helps you out if you're looking to do something similar to this. But uh, this is how I did it. It seems to work really good for my garage. It does, it does warm it up fairly effectively and, and keep it warm if I'm out there working on something. Thank you for watching.